these good people up here on behalf of our sponsors. We are one of the few remaining radio shows that's fortunate enough to have a sponsor. <laughs> so, if you could join us in the next half hour, you could do us all a big favor if you would. And that is, sometime this week, stop by your neighborhood RCA Victor dealer and pick up a 27 inch television set or a record player or something. Because we'd like to be up here next year at the same time. Well, as you know, this year, Phil is out on his own. We're starting our new season. So I know you want to send him off to the great big fanfare. So what do you say we all get together and give a big welcome to the man who discovered the South, Phil Harris. Let's hear it! Very much. I can't tell you what it means to me to come out here all by myself. You're all applauding, and you got those smiles on your faces, and you're glad to see me. And I just want to tell you, I love you more because I need you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been Jack Benny for 16 years, and ain't no money connected with that. Only <laughs> 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 on payday, take you to dark room, give you one fast course of love, and blow, and you've had it. <laughs> One thing straightened out with you nice people right now. I want to tell you, please don't believe all you hear that I depend on Alice for my livelihood. <laughs> I don't do that because, you know, that's like Benny being cheap. I mean, it's not like Benny being cheap. <laughs> but I do not depend on Alice. I've had my own job. It's a very important job, and I've had it now for 10 years. A lot of people tried to take it from me, and my boss says, no, there isn't anybody could do this job like Phil has. I'm a test pilot for Seaver. <laughs> I don't know if you, but don't stop me. I want to hear it again myself. <laughs> you hear the story about the guy walks to the barber shop says, how many head of me? The barber says, three. The guy went out and he don't come back. Next day he comes in again. He says, the barber, how many head of me? The barber says, three. The guy goes out. He don't come back. Now the barber's going crazy, you know, all day on his feet with the scissors and all, you know. So he walks over to the booth like he says, look, every day a guy comes in, wants to know how many's ahead. I tell him he goes out. He don't come back. If he does it tomorrow, follow him. I want to know. Next day, the guy came in, said, the barber, how many head of me? The barber says, three. The guy went out to Boot Black Clothing, came back in about 20 minutes. The barber says, where'd he go? Where'd he go? The Boot Black says, to your house. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to be a good bunch tonight. (laughs) You're like the kid who's parting hair in the middle all the time. And he got tired of it, and he went to the barber, and he had the barber put the part from here over to here. Then he had to give him bangs in front and bangs in the back. The kid said it got awfully monotonous because people kept coming up whispering in his nose. <laughs> you about the drunk fell out of the 12-story building? This guy's blind, drunk, and he fell out of a window. 12 stories up, he hit on the ground. Boom! There's a big crowd around. He got up, he's brushing himself off. The fellow walked up, says, what happened? He says, damn fine, no, I just got here. <laughs> Show. We got a good script, too, boy. Ooh, I love you. Uh, I want to tell you this much that whatever little success that we've attained, ladies and gentlemen, Alice and I, in the past few years on our show, is due to the listening of you nice people and to the fact that we have a wonderful organization, of which I'm very proud. Because, oh, incidentally, I see a few fellas sitting around like some sailors, and I want to tell you guys it's always a pleasure to have you here, especially in the Navy, because I was in the Navy during the first war myself. I fought the Battle of Catalina. <laughs> You're laughing. We lost eight lobster traps. <laughs> but anyway, I do. They, I, you might get a kick out of this. They had a very unique way of selecting their enlisted men according to what they'd done in private life when I went in. For instance, I went in with a couple of buddies of mine, and one of them was a street cleaner, and they put him on a minesweeper. And this other buddy of mine was a construction guy. He tore down buildings and broke them up and everything, and they put him on a destroyer. How I ever wound up on a ferry boat, I'll never... (laughs) But I loved it because we never got in rough water. It was always calm and everything. (laughs) No, getting back to my organization that I am very proud of. Now, you take, for instance, 
Everyone you see sitting on that stand does an outstanding job on his or her particular instrument. <laughs> but the stuff that I know that you don't know. <laughs> Take the leader. He's okay. He, uh... <laughs> we're very proud of him because we find that we have a genius on our hands. And I mean just that because, ladies and gentlemen, this boy has a tremendous record in as much as he's already had two of his own compositions played in Hollywood Bowl. And uh, he has been nominated six different times for the Academy Award, the Motion Picture Academy Award. And uh, last year, he was nominated again for the Academy Award and just missed it by a few votes for the wonderful job that he did on the arranging and directing of all the beautiful music that you heard in the wonderful Hans Christian Anderson story. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Walter Sharp. <laughs> He has to do that until he gets me in one of the pictures. <laughs> it's going to be a long, long time. <laughs> hey, Bill Foreman, i got to introduce him. I know he came out at first. <laughs> now I'd like for you to meet our cast, ladies and gentlemen. First, this is whose fault it is, because without her... I don't think it would be possible. We've been married for 13 years now. And I'm just telling you this much, that she's not only the most beautiful gal in the world, but this kid's got the power. Mm -hmm. Alice Faye! Let's take a Two little girls that play the part of Alice and Phyllis on the program. They've been with us ever since we started. And they, too, are two of the most competent little actresses we have in the business. Janine Roos and Ann Whitfield. Come on. <laughs> Don't come too young for me. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Where's my other daughter? Where's Janine? Surprise. See, we get surprised. Okay. okay. Here is uh What's the matter, Alice? <laughs> Here's the little kid that we've used on our program several times, and we're just proud to have him on with us tonight because he not only is a terrific little actor, but he is what we call one of our great baseball authorities. Just because he loves the game so much, just because he loves the players, he loves everything that baseball stands for, he has taken time out. Although he is in demand as an actor, he has taken time out to make a full study of the game. And if you like baseball, you saw him as one of the umpires at Hollywood last year on the Pacific Coast and a boy that is considered already after one year in our baseball out here being one of our outstanding umpires aside from being a terrific actor, a wonderful kid, a nice hand for Gil Stratton, ladies and gentlemen. You're not supposed to applaud, you're supposed to boo. <laughs> now we get out, let's see where we are now. Oh yeah, here's a little kid that steals our show every week. We're very happy about it because we not only love him, but we know that he is clever and deserves it. Here's the kid that plays the part of the grocery boy, Julius Abruzio. <laughs> Here are the four boys who have been with us ever since we've started. They also are responsible for all of those cute commercials that you hear on the Jack Benny program. Whenever we go out to play any dates, like fairs or anything like that, wouldn't think of going without them. And if you ever see him, Bill, like in Las Vegas or any place that you see him in the hotels and all, go see him because they'll entertain him in the latest style, the four sportsmen, ladies and gentlemen. This little fella's the leader. That's what he's doing. get through with you, Dad. <laughs> Here he is, the one and only Ellie Lowe. Hey, 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for coming. Enjoy yourself. Thanks for being so nice to me. I hope you enjoy the program. Thank you. La da 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 da. La da 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 da. You'll never know just how much I love yous. La da 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 da. Ah, Julius, what do you think? Miss Faye, you'll make Doris call it a day. All right, Mr. Sharp, I'm ready. RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, transcribed, written by Ed James and Phil Shukin, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, John Hubbard, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Phil Foreman. Tonight's frantic little fantasy is entitled, Little Alice's First Date, or, I Don't Want to Be a Lonesome Banana, I'll Just Hang Around with the Bunch. <laughs> And now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Bill Harris. <laughs> Bill Harris and Alice Faye are known as Phil Harris and Alice Faye. <laughs> In private life, however, they are known as Mr. and Mrs. Alice Faye. <laughs> They have two daughters, little Alice and little Phyllis. But time doing what time does, they're not quite so little as Phil would like to think. Phil thinks? <laughs> Harris, you are divine. You are sublime. You're a sensation. <laughs> You are all mine. You're such a doll. That's you, Phil. Honey, if it ain't me, how dare I be so handsome? <laughs> oh, sewing something, huh? No, no. Just running a needle in and out of Alice's coat to improve the ventilation. <laughs> oh, that really helps, huh? Every time. Well, then what's the rush? Why don't you do it tomorrow? Well, it happens that Alice is going to a dance tonight... With a date. Honey, I got news for you. No baby daughter of mine is going to no dance with no date. <laughs> Not as long as I got anything to do with it. And I've got news for you, Mr. Van Winkle. A 14-year-old girl is not a baby. Fourteen? Uh -huh. But it seems like only yesterday I was putting her in her playpen. It was, and she's getting pretty tired of it. <laughs> I just can't believe it. In only 14 years, how could she get to be 14 years old? She doesn't count the way you do. <laughs> Telling people you're 25. I don't tell people I'm 25. I tell them that Alice is 14 and I was a father at 11. <laughs> They figure the rest out for themselves. Now, Phil, you can't be a juvenile all your life. Even, even Mickey Rooney grew up. Yeah, but not all the way. <laughs> hey, Mom, you know who is ready. All right, dear. And here she comes now. <laughs> people. Holy jumping catfish. Phil, <laughs> oh, that's your own daughter. My own. Hey, that's Alice. Phyllis, pull down all them shades. What's the matter, Pop? Some of the guys from the band might be outside and she can't run in them high-heeled shoes. <laughs> pull down them 
shades. Pull down them shades. Oh, Phil, come How on. do you like my strapless evening gown, Dad? Isn't it cool? Why shouldn't it be? There ain't enough of it to keep it. <laughs> what she means, Pop. She means it's real gone. Yeah, and if you ask me, it's too far gone. <laughs> now put some of it back on. You don't like the way I look. Yes, I do, Alice. Honestly, I do. It's, well, it's just that, well, I ain't seen this much of you since you had your first baby picture taken. <laughs> She's so different from all the other girls. And this is a coming out party. She's coming out, all right. <laughs> Looks like she's getting squeezed out of a tube of toothpaste. <laughs> and what's more... Wait a minute. Hold it, Clyde. Now what's the matter? Her lips. She's bleeding. <laughs> oh, will you stop carrying on? That's lipstick. Lipstick? My baby daughter is wearing lipstick? Looks like you put it on with a trowel. <laughs> mother, mother, he's here. He's here. And furthermore, easy, I'm not... Father, easy. Let's not get our little brain in a tizzy. Look, honey, we'll I'm... We'll talk about it later. Be a good boy and let Sniffy in. Why do I have to... Who? <laughs> Sniffy. Oh, Pop, he's wonderful. You call him Sniffy? <laughs> We won't call him anything if you don't let him in. Now, come on, fellas. Come on. Come on. Let's uh, finish putting the finished touches on Alice, huh? Oh, Mother, I'm so excited. Oh, he's a doll. Oh, mush. <laughs> <laughs> Sniffy. Oh, there's a classy name. Sni- All right, I'm coming. I'm coming. A date already. First thing you know, I'm going to have gray hair. Or no hair. I'll be a grandfather. Oh, crawdad. <laughs> Hiya, curly old kid. Who you calling old? What's the matter? Something go wrong, Dad? And don't call me Dad. Okay. You got a lot of nerve coming in here making cracks about how old I am. You ain't no spring chicken yourself, Clyde. Wait a minute. Let's start this thing all over again. <laughs> Hey, Curly, how's tricks? Oh, come in and shut the door, will you? Beautiful night, ain't it? Not that I care one way or the other, but it seemed like a reasonable way to open the conversation. All right, Ellie, don't open no conversations. I'm full of problems. I got a lot of problems. Bad, huh? Oh, it's Alice, my little daughter. She's growing up. First thing you know, she'll get married. She'll be a mother. A grandmother. She'll be older than I am. (laughs) talking about, Curly? Little Alice. She's going out with a guy. Oh. I see what you mean. What do you mean you see what I mean? What's wrong with her going out with a guy? Well, I remember the first time I went out with a girl. And if I was you, I wouldn't let her. <laughs> Look, Elliot. You may not know about these things like this, but there are some kids who don't go around peddling hot hubcaps. <laughs> and there are some young men that respect American womanhood. How about the first time you went out with a girl, Curly? <laughs> I'll kill him. <laughs> All right, wait a minute, Curly. Hold it. Now, let's figure this thing out. What do you know about this kid? Where's he taking her? Just to a school dance. The place will be loaded with chaperones. Uh Uh-huh. How much can a loaded chaperone watch? (laughs) How old is he? I don't know. Fifteen? Twenty? Twenty-five? I'll tell you, I don't know. He's just a kid that... What do you mean, (laughs) twenty-five? He's in the ninth grade with Alice. When I was twenty-five, I was in the sixth grade. Yeah, and at the rate you were going, you would have gotten out when you were 50. See what I mean? Oh, Elliot, what am I going to do? About what? About Alice. I can't let her go out with a man 50 years old. You know, it's a good thing I showed up, Curly. 
You've got to watch these things. You suppose his wife knows about it? <laughs> Whose wife? The kids. He's got a wife? Curly. You don't think you got to be 50 years old without a wife and kids, do you? <laughs> the kids got kids? You know, this gets worse all the time. Look, Elliot, you gotta help me. You know me, Curly. My right arm up to there. Okay, but now we gotta be clever about this. You bet. Real clever. Diabolical. You know something? We'll be so clever that this guy will never know what happened. Right. Now... There's only one other thing I've got to figure out. What's that, Curl? How do we do it? <laughs> That's a problem. Maybe... I got it. We'll take him in the garage. And stuff him inside of a tire. No! <laughs> we'll work on him. With sledgehammer. No, Elliot, no. We'll question him, That's all. We'll find out all about him. Hold we'll... it, Curly. What? There's a guy coming up the front walk. Let me see. See? Yeah. Yeah. That's him, Sniffy. Pardon me? That's the guy, Sniffy. He's a clever devil, ain't he? Fifty years old and made up to look like a kid of 15. Hell. <laughs> now, look, Elliot. Yes? Go outside and grab him. Right. And, Elliot. Yeah? I'll meet you in the garage in two minutes. I got to get in the mood. Right. The story you're about to hear is true. <laughs> Names have been changed to protect the actors. <laughs> It was late when I got back to headquarters and I found three bodies piled in front of my desk. That was peculiar because I don't have a desk. It was Harris. My name is Friday. I mean, it was Friday. My name is Harris. <laughs> Suddenly, a voice rang out in the dark and a weird, mysterious voice, a voice that seemed to say... Is that you, Chief? Yeah, where's the kid? Right here. Okay, let's go to work. Close the door, Joe. Okay, Chief. Seven car garage. <laughs> we don't fool around with no small stuff. You ready to start, Chief? Right. Shine the lightning side. Right. All right, sir. Start talking. Gosh, Mr. Harris, I don't know what this is all about. I came to take Alice to the dance, and this man told me that I had to wait in the garage, and I'm very confused. <laughs> Besides, I don't like garages because I'm. Allergic. Won't talk, huh? Now look, sir. Yes, Mr. Harris? <laughs> this boy needs a new washer. <laughs> Keep going, Chief. You're doing great. Okay, uh... What do I do next? Ask his name. Right. What's your name, sir? Sniffy. You hear that, Elliot? His name is Sniffy. A clever alias, but it won't hold water. Sniffy. Yes, sir? I can't keep calling him Sniffy. What's your right name, sir? My right name, Mr. Harris, is Odell Sneed Hathaway. The third. Odell? Sneeden? Hathaway. The third. Look, Sniffy. <laughs> yes, sir? How old are you? I'm 15, sir. A likely story, 16 he's a day. Now, Elliot, will you stop interrupting? <laughs> Sorry, Chief, go ahead. Okay, uh... Take over, Elliot. Right. Sniffy? Yes, sir? What more are you with? What? Take him, Chief. Right. Where do you work? I... Where do you live? I... Where were we on the night of January 16th? Elliot. <laughs> Sorry, Chief, slip down. You want to take over? No, go ahead. You're doing fine. Okay. <laughs> Sniffy, now pay attention. 
What are your intentions toward my daughter? Well, if she don't bother me, I won't bother her. <laughs> Chief, might as well face it, we're not getting any place. We'll have to use force. Force? What kind of force? Oh, nothing elaborate. Maybe a few of the basic torches, like the Iron Maiden, the Chinese water cure, listening to Guy Lombardo. <laughs> Art Linkletter won't get it, huh? You, you better let me out of here, or I'll tell my father. Now we got him. I didn't want to go to any old dance in the, in the first place. He's cracking wide open. I don't like dances, and I... And I don't like girls. And, and you better let me go home. Keep going, sir. You're doing fine. <laughs> My father's the district attorney, and when I tell him what you did to me... You hear that, Chief? His father's the... Who? <laughs> he, he's the district attorney. That's who my father is. Uh... Take over, Curly. <laughs> I should have gone to the football game in the first place. That's what I should have done. Curly got it already. <laughs> <That's> sniffy. <laughs> oh, Dell boy, you got us all wrong, hasn't he, Elliot? So wrong. He doesn't know why we brought him out into the garage, does he? <laughs> <laughs> he thought we were going to torture him. Yeah. <laughs> when all the time, all we wanted to do is give him some tickets to the football game. <laughs> In the garage? <laughs> no, in the Coliseum. Oh. Well, gosh, I, I thought you were mad at me or something. Us? Mad at you? Did you hear that, Elliot? He thought we were mad at him. Good old Odell Sneed. Yeah. Now, look, Snippy, here's a couple of tickets for the Rams game. Now, go ahead out of here and have a lot of fun. Yeah, live it up. Have a ball. The Rams? Gosh. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Thank you very much. Yeah, give my regards to your father. Yeah, say hello to the D.A. Goodbye. <laughs> we did it. Oh, we got rid of him, didn't we? Wait till I tell Alice. Hey, boy, will she be tickled, huh? Hey, wait a minute, Elliot. What's that? We forgot one thing. What's that, Curly? We never found out how many kids he had. <laughs> Hey, Alice. Alice, honey. Oh, now, Phil, have you seen Sniffy? He was supposed to have been here 15 minutes ago. <laughs> Tell her, Curly. Hey, honey, wait till you hear what we did. Just wait till you hear what... Mother, I can't understand it. He promised he'd take me. Oh, Alice, baby, listen. You got nothing to worry about. We fixed that Sniffy character. We sniffed him good. Yeah. <laughs> you what? Oh, Mother! Yes, sir. It'll be a long time before he comes messing around here again. Phil, you didn't send him away. Send him away? You hear that, Curly? <laughs> <laughs> hey, honey, you should have heard it. Man, Elliot started that torture business on him. And Phil when he... Harris. Oh, Mother. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Alice, you didn't want her to go out with that drip, did you? Phil, if you'd only keep on to the things that don't concern it you. It concerns me as much as anybody. She's my daughter, and she ain't going out with no strange guys. For your information, Phil, they went to kindergarten together. It's like I said, Curly, a pickup. <laughs> Gee, we were such good friends. He carried my book, and I carried his nose drop. <laughs> and now he'll never speak to me again <laughs> Oh, honey, don't Don't, honey, gee whiz I was only trying to help Oh, you were a big help I tried to help, too All right <laughs> All right, get going, both of you What? You've got just five minutes to produce Sniffy Or a reasonable facsimile Which makes the kid sound like a box top <laughs> Now, look, honey. Get. But I... Get. Wait a minute, Alice. I'm the head of this family, and I'll look for Sniffy when I'm good and ready. Phil? I'm ready. Come on, Alice. <laughs> Where we you look for him, Curly? Oh, how do I know? Come on, let's get. We'll ad lib as we go. Oh, Mother. Oh, Alice. Alice. I'm so miserable. What am I going to do? Oh, well, gee... Maybe a song would help. Snuggle up, kitten, huh? You, 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 
I'm in love with you, you, you. I could be so true, true, true to someone like you, you, you. Do, do, do what you ought to do, do, do. Take me in your arms, please do. Let me cling to you, you, you. We were meant for each other, sure as heaven's above. We were meant for each other, to have, to hold, and to love. You, 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 there's no one like you, you, you. You could make my dreams come true, if you say you love me too. Wait a minute. Drop it a fifth. <laughs> you know, Curly, I don't think we're going to find him this way. What makes you think so? They never found Chloe, did they? <laughs> hey, wait a minute. That's an idea. What? Any good swamps around here? No. Well, why don't we look for him at the Coliseum? Well, for? Well, ain't that where the Rams are playing? The Cucamonga Rams? <laughs> you mean you gave him tickets? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Curly, you're a clever one. A clever? Yeah. I'm as sharp as a sack of wet cement. <laughs> I got news for you. If I don't produce Sniffy, I ain't going home. Hey, Curly... What about that other thing? You know, the facsimile. What are you talking about? Where are we going to find a thing like that at this time of night, Curly? <laughs> when she said a facsimile, she meant... Look out! A facsimile is look out? No, no, no. No, it means the same thing. Then what's the difference? Curly, look. When I say... Look out! Here That's Julius! Why, that little runt tried to run us down. I'll find... He's a facsimile. Curly, we got it. Julius is a facsimile? In a nauseating sort of a way. <laughs> hey, why don't you guys stand still? <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, you chicken or something? <laughs> hey, he's backing up now. He's going to stop. Look, I got an idea. What? If we can't find one of them facsimile things, how about using Julius? Curly, you are a loo loo. What are you fellas doing up on a sidewalk? Don't you know it's dangerous? <laughs> oh, hello, Julius, old buddy boy. Maybe I clipped them going by. <laughs> Could we speak to you for a moment, please, sir? I must have mangled the both of them. <laughs> hey, uh, Julius. How would you like to go to a dance? Can you lead? <laughs> Come here, Julius. Just a little closer. I'm close enough. What do you got on your mind? 
As if my deadly intuition didn't tell me. <laughs> no, 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 kid. Not today, no. No, you got us all wrong, old buddy. We're your friends. Either my intuition is dead or I'm gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> Julius, we're gonna make you a real happy kid. You gonna let me back the truck over here? <laughs> Oh, got a wonderful sense of humor, that kid, huh, Elliot? Oh, a laugh a minute, Curly. <laughs> yeah. Nothing but laughs. Alice, yeah. please, you're taking all the fun out of it. You're supposed to fight me. You? You? Our buddy? Our pal? Our facsimile? <laughs> hey, Judge. Now, listen. How would you like to take a beautiful young lady to a dance? I ain't interested. But we already made the date for you. Great! Call me up tomorrow and let me know if I had a good time. <laughs> Don't be that way, Julius. Look, we'll do anything you say. Name your own terms. Ooh, this dame must be a darb. <laughs> well, are you going to go, or ain't you? Will you wash me truck? I'll wash and he'll wipe. Will you deliver me groceries all day tomorrow and call me Mr. Abruzio? We will call you dear Mr. Abruzio. King of the supermarkets. You'll do all that for poor little insignificant me? How about it, Julius? I still ain't interested. <laughs> now look, you little creep. Leave him alone, Elliot. Leave him alone. <laughs> Don't bother him. Just leave him alone. If he won't, he won't. Just means poor little Alice won't go to the dance, that's all. Well, she'll get over it. Oh, Alice, huh? Wait a minute, me good man. I have decided to reconsider your proposition. I shall be only too happy to accompany the fair damsel in pursuit of types of Corey and the lights. Huh? <laughs> that means yes. Oh, oh, oh. Well, then go ahead, Julius. What are you waiting for? You want I should take poor little Alice in the truck? No, no, no. You can take my car. But look, hurry up. You'll miss the whole dance. I'll dance like a breeze, like a feather floating in the summer air, like a boy in the arms of the goyle. You got any intuition? Why? Mine tells me something is all loused up. Hey, honey. Hey, Alice. She isn't home, Pop. Who isn't? Anybody isn't. I'm all alone. Well, that's funny. Where do you suppose... Hi, Uncle Elliot. How's every little thing? Oh, great, Phil. Great. Little Alice get taken care of, all right? Sure. She and Sniffy went to the football game. Sniffy? Oh, you said you gave him tickets, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, fellas. <laughs> what happened when Julia showed up? Well, he and Mom went to the dance, like you said. Oh! <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. Every one of the dollars you'll invest in a television set is mighty important to you. So make sure you get full value for your money. Make sure you get an RCA Victor. New RCA Victor television costs as little as $199.95. Yet it's the finest TV you can buy. And remember this. When you buy one of the new RCA Victor television receivers, you can enjoy America's finest installation and maintenance through an RCA Victor factory service contract. This exclusive factory service is another reason why, every year, more people buy RCA Victor than any other television. This is Phil again. To encourage Americans to speak up for freedom, Freedom's Foundation is currently offering its fifth annual awards program. Cash awards and honor medals are offered in 15 categories. You may obtain entry blanks by writing the Freedoms Foundation, Incorporated, Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. Thank you, and good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Included in this program transcribed was Gil Stratton. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. This has been an NBC Radio Network production. <laughs>